181, the, uh, the restraints which operate on the speaker operate when a motion for his removal is under consideration. All right. Now, what has been done in Nabam Arabia is to read in certain implied restraints based on a harmonious reading of the 10th schedule on the, and, and these provisions of the constitution. But those restraints, if you have to be logical, those restraints which we bring in by an implied reading of limitations on the power of the speaker must also commence when a motion for his removal is under consideration, right? Now, when is a motion for the removal of the speaker under consideration? Stage one is the proviso to 179C when a motion for the when a when a, a notice when notice has been given of the intention to move a resolution. Yes. 179C proviso reflects the intention of a member right. to move a resolution right. for the removal of the speaker. Right. So I'm going to move a resolution. I have an intent here and now right. to move a resolution for his removal. As soon as that is given and a period of 14 days has expired, right. then the rules, rule 11 says that on the expiry of 14 days, the speaker thereafter has to convene right. the house right. and the notice has to be read. Right. If the notice is, if, if it is supported by 29 members, right. then leave shall be granted. Right. Once leave is granted, then seven. not less than seven days. seven days have to be given, Absolute. after That's which it. the motion will be taken up for consideration. Absolute. Therefore, the reading of these rules would indicate that the motion for the removal, the intent, the notice which is for the notice which is given of the intent to move the resolution, the motion is under consideration only after the house is granted leave. And upon the grant of leave, the motion is taken up for consideration after a period of seven days. Right. Because seven days has to be uh, right. Now, can we say that the motion is under consideration at any stage prior to the grant of leave? We need not go as far as to say that the motion is not under consideration until seven days have elapsed. That seven days is for him to really have sufficient opportunity. Correct. Correct. But the grant of leave is a critical facet because it is upon the grant of leave that the motion then exactly. is so, to be considered by the house. So just it cannot be considered until the expiry of seven days. But after the expiry of seven days, then the speaker, then the speaker so just to note, add to what to be considered. What, what my lord said, just to add to what my lord said in all humility, that is exactly because prior to the grant of leave, if you don't muster up twenty nine members, yes, that's, that's this right. You, uh, but then, what Justice Mishra requirement is absent. What Justice Mishra is within para twenty three is that when that notice is given between that period of fourteen days, if the composition is altered, nothing stops him from doing it. Anyone who will ostensibly, as per his assessment, vote against him in those 14 days from the moment intention is expressed till it fructifies in a resolution or a motion is altered, what happens? Manas, that's exactly the position that Justice Mishra deals with. We can't say that a speaker who wants to work towards unconstitutional ends will only start working towards unconstitutional ends after a resolution or a motion is taken up and will not work towards them from the date the intention for his removal is expressed under 79C uh, proviso. He will not wait for a motion to be moved seven days, 14 days, they will follow. That's the procedure under the constitution and the assembly rules. That speaker will start working the day the intention is given to alter the pool. And that is what Justice Mishra says that how do we protect that period? of 14 days before your lodges are absolutely right the way your lodges summed it up. But for that period from 179C to 181 and Rule 11, how will the composition of the then members, and this does not include 191 and 1021.